In the cosmology of indigenous peoples throughout the Americas, there are three worlds. There's the middle world that we live in, the physical world. Then there's the lower world, which is the world of the dream time. It's what we call the unconscious or the subconscious in the West. And then there's the upper world, which is our superconscious, our possibilities. It represents the time to come, our potentials. The, within our middle world, our physical world, the shamans recognize four directions, which are the same as our cardinal points, the north, the south, the east, and the west, and they attribute qualities to each one of these directions. The, um, the south is represented by the serpent, the west by the jaguar, the north by the hummingbird, the east by the eagle. Each of these has an attribute that corresponds, for example, in physics to the four uh, fundamental laws of physics which are electromagnetism, gravity, the strong and the weak nuclear force. In biology, it corresponds, corresponds to the four base pairs of DNA. DNA has an alphabet with four letters only, with which all of life is created. When you master your relationship with the south, the north, the west, the east, you're actually mastering a dialogue with the organizing principles of nature you're able to participate actively in creation. Because in the Western mythology on the seventh day, God rested. In the indigenous mythology, on the seventh day, the Great Spirit said, I have created the whales and the butterflies and the flamingos and the eagles. Now you finish it. And in order for us to take stewardship of creation, to complete creation, we need to know the alphabet, the codes, which for the shaman were always represented by south, north, east, west, serpent, jaguar, hummingbird, eagle, that you could have an interactive relationship even with the forces of nature. These were symbols and metaphors, of course, but they provided the basis for a dialogue. You know, I, I don't have a great deal of interest in making this work in people's everyday lives. People's everyday lives is basically one of being asleep and then dulling ourselves with uh, any way we can. So I, this is really an invitation to step out of an ordinary life and into an extraordinary life, into an epic life. So we don't want to reduce shamanism to people's everyday life. We want to invite individuals to live a life of spirit and to have an epic journey. We didn't come here to spend another year in therapy. You know, we came here to, to, to go on an epic journey, to make a difference in the world, to explore life and love and creativity and this is, this is what the shaman does. Okay. When we speak about dreaming our world into being, we're saying that the world is malleable and flexible and responds to every single thought and intention that you have. And when we take responsibility for every thought and intention, when we realize that everything that we perceive, we're actually projecting onto the world, then we can change the quality of our love, the quality of our will, and the quality of our intention, and the world will mirror that back perfectly to us. And that's how we dream our world into being. And to do that, you first have to step out of the nightmare, of the collective nightmare that has been dreamt for us by society, so that you can live a dream that is a sacred dream, that is a dream of peace, that is a dream of wellness, of health, and of beauty.